Uh, I read this funny article today that said teenagers are figuring out how to fake positive COVID tests using lemon juice and hacks from TikTok. Um, so if you read this, evidently a bunch of British kids are using TikTok to spread knowledge about how to fake positive COVID-19 tests because then they don't have to go to school because if they're positive, then they can skip school, uh, which is uh, pretty funny that they're using TikTok to do this. And uh, a little funny to see how ingenious kids are at trying to avoid school. But this made me curious as to see why um, why this is happening. How can you fake these tests using um, soda? So someone, and I have to commend these people who are work at uh, some children's hospital in the UK for doing this because this came out on July 1st and within four days they had done a quick study and published a preprint. Now, admittedly, this study is very easy to do. So what they did here is they got a lateral flow device, and those are um, tests that they are using in the UK to screen children for COVID-19. And you have to remember that uh, there's several different kinds of um, COVID tests. The most common is the PCR test, and that's the one um, where they use a PCR machine to amplify the uh, the uh, genomic sequences of the viruses that they're found in the nasal swabs. And those are kind of the gold standard. This is what's uh, often called a rapid antigen test. And what it is, is it's looking for the protein and it uses antibodies to look for the protein. Um, so it's very similar to a pregnancy test and it looks a lot like a pregnancy test, these lateral fl flow devices. So they use the Innova SARS-2 antigen rapid qualitative uh, lateral flow device. And they basically got uh, 14 different things. So here they are, like Sprite, Coke, Diet Coke, Fanta, different kinds of juices, um, and some Ro Robinson's Hydro Fruit Spring Water. These must be things that are in the UK because I haven't heard of these things. And so th what they did is they just applied them to the lateral flow device. And here's the picture of what you get. And you can see there's a control line, which is this. And, and the test line. So if the test line shows up, uh, you see a line at the test line, then that's a positive test. So you can see here, this is positive, this is positive, and maybe positive, this is positive, this is positive, it's very weakly positive, this is weakly positive, this is strongly positive, positive, and then this would be negative, negative, because the control lines don't show up. Anyways, they just basically, um, the study is they just got a bunch of soft drinks and put them in the sample well here. What you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put saliva in here and then add a um, reagent to it. And so how do these tests work? Okay, so there's a, a little YouTube video on how it works here. Let's skip through it. So inside this test, there's basically a strip of paper nitrocellulose membrane. It's basically paper. And what you do is you apply the uh, sample here, and then by capillary action, it uh, the sample moves across the uh, paper. So you apply the sample here, and then the, the liquid in the sample will move by capillary action across here. This is capillary action is why, like, when you stick a piece of, like, a uh, paper towel in water, the water will crawl up the paper towel. So it's going up in here, and here's the samples. What a COVID test is looking for is usually either the spike protein or the nucleocapsid protein. So if you find the, if it has the nucleocapsid, most of them are nucleocapsid, there is an antibody in this area that binds the nucleocapsid protein. And on the other end of the antibody, so the antibody looks like a little Y, and the target fits at the end of the Y, and at the, at the bottom of the Y, they stick some kind of colorant. Uh, it's usually colloidal gold, or sometimes it's um, uh, carbon, uh, but it's some kind of color agent that's easy to see. So if it has it, it will pick it up. So it'll pick up the nucleocapsid. If it, there's no nucleocapsid, this this uh, antibody will flow down the thing without without the nucleocapsid protein. And then on here, on the test line, there's another antibody that's just like this antibody that I, that um, attaches to the nucleocapsid protein. But that one is bound to here. So what will happen is, yeah, so it, the nucleocapsid acts like a sandwich. Okay, hold on. Yeah, it acts as a sandwich right here. I think farther down they will, okay, yeah. So basically what it's doing is this. 
This antibody is stuck to the paper at the test line. There, the nucleocapsid protein will fit right here, and then um, the other antibody has, is attached to a piece of color. So you need this antibody so the color will show up. You need this antibody so that it shows up at the test line. Otherwise, this color will just go right down the paper. But anyway, this, this is the same way that pregnancy tests work and um, the same way that these rapid antigen tests work. However, if you stick some kind of soft drink in here, and soft drinks obviously have no nucleocapsid protein or spike protein, um, they will show up as a test result. Now, why is that the case? This paper, obviously, because it did it in like three days, they have no idea. Um, so it says, our study finds it plausible that these lateral flow devices could be falsified by putting soft drinks instead of samples. Um, the mechanism of action of the false positive is not yet obvious. So they don't know. They, they look for a very simple thing. They tested the pH, and most of these are slightly acidic, uh, pH of 5. And that uh, did not correlate with the positive or negative test result because there's a bunch of them that are uh, pH of 5, but they didn't have a positive result. So it's not the pH. So they don't know what it is, but it's not just, at least it's not just the pH. And they tried different kind of sweeteners, um, and none of the sweeteners gave a positive result. So it's not the sugar either. It's not the sugar or the, or the uh, NutraSweet or the um, Splenda. It's not any of the sweeteners. So it's not the sweeteners alone, and it's not the pH alone. Um, but it's, it's probably some, some mixture of the pH or the um, sweeteners or some other ingredient in there that makes the two uh, antibodies sandwiched together. It probably gums it up, basically, and gives, makes everything positive. So without needing a target... It just makes this thing bind to this thing without having this thing in the middle. Because um, these are just proteins and the way they stick, it can be a very weak interaction or it can be a stronger interaction depending on the buffer conditions. So I think it's just a, a thing about the buffer conditions, but pretty ingenious that uh, kids figured this out. I guess they were just randomly trying every, anything. Yeah, I imagine that it's not just soft drinks, but several other things could give, give it a false positive. Um, but anyway, I thought it was, I, I just, this uh, this caught my interest, and I, I had to look up the paper about it. Um, unfortunately, they don't give a definitive um, mechanism, but uh, it's it's interesting that somehow these soft drinks will make these two antibodies sandwiched together without the target.